Hey guys, Darren Carr here, coach of Wise Ocean Pods, and welcome back to another episode of our round preview series. As you know by now, on this series, we will be discussing the most popular trade-in and trade-out targets for the week, um, generally just giving some, some of my insights of what I'd be doing in some different situations that you may be experiencing in your team, um, and I also just generally discuss what to expect in the round to come, sort of discussing what my trades are going to be like, and also giving my captain picks for the week. So without further ado, let's sort of just get into the trades. Um, so we'll start out. We'll start with the trade out targets. So starting out, start, starting out here uh, as James Jordan. Bit of a surprise for me, considering he does have the West Coast matchup. Um, as we know, West Coast give up a lot of points. Even if we go to our um, season long matrix here, you can see that uh, if we go down to Sydney, who obviously um, Jordan plays for. Against West Coast is a very easy matchup, so um, I'm hopeful, and I'm not considering trading out Jordan at this point in time. I'm hopeful that he can push sort of a 70 to an 80 this week, given the easy matchup, and can make us an extra, you know, 20, 25k before we ship him off at his buy next week. Um, that's the only reason I can sort of think that people are looking to ship him off. Obviously, he only scored the 60 last week. How has he actually been going? But before that, he's been consistently scoring at a 70. So. Um, a seventy, a high seventy, actually. So I wouldn't be too concerned with one lower score. I know his cash generation is probably a bit lower now that his break even is now fifty four, but I'm hopeful that he can push back up to those sort of numbers this week and make us another twenty twenty five k before we ship him off next week. So um, definitely one I'm not looking at trading out. But if that if he's he's the only problem in your team, then you must have much a better team than I do. And yeah, definitely can support if it gets you that premium that you're looking for if you're looking to jump up. So. Happy with that. Next one is Zach Fisher. And again, probably a little bit surprising considering how weak our forward line is. He is scoring at that, you know, um, mid-70 to 80 range where, yes, he's not making about a bunch of cash, but I feel like it's a, a serviceable sort of number that he's putting up. Um, did He's making a little bit of cash, but nothing significant that you'd be too concerned. So, Again, I'm probably not looking at jumping off him just yet. I've got a few other issues that I'd rather fix up, like a like an F6 spot that I'd rather assure up at this point in time. So, um, does have a harder matchup in the Brisbane Lions, and I think he has the uh, who does he have after that? He has the Cats after that. If I go over here and go to general kickouts, a uh, general um, defender. For North Melbourne, so you can see here, they've got Brisbane and then they've got Geelong after that. So, two tougher matchups for general defenders, even if I go for designated kickers, which he sort of is, but isn't all the time. Tougher this week, but then uh, not so tough next week. So, um, it's a bit of a tricky one for me. I, if you, Like I said, it all depends on your team structure. If you're happy to move him on and you can get, if he gets you to that top line guy like a Flanders or... Um, you know, a Zorka or something, somewhere in that range where you, you're looking to get that top top of the line premium, then I'll, I'd support the move. But I think um, this time of year, there's other things that we can do rather than moving on a guy that's consistently scoring us, you know, a, a high 70s, if not 80s. Um, but yeah, like I said, I don't think he's too much of a concern. So we'll move on here. Now, Nat Fife is probably, I would probably consider being the most traded out this week. I think just the few flags that we've had given the last couple of weeks. He hasn't made a huge amount of cash. He's really dropped his cash generation after scoring a, 50, a 63 and a 61 last week. Um, obviously, he was subbed the week prior and had a really poor week this week. With Still has a 25, 21 disposals, just, yeah, very minimal um, output in any other stat line, which is not something we want to usually see. Um, so I can I could definitely consider moving him on. Does have a tougher matchup again this week as an inside mid. Quickly check over here. Go to Frio. He has Colton then Port Adelaide. Um, in the next two. So, um, yeah, definitely could be one you could jump off. And if that gets you to you know the guys you were looking for, I uh, definitely support that. But yeah, even if you have to hold him, if you have other issues, I don't think he will be drop below too much of a sixty. Um, he'll probably just be one that will just sit in your side. He may be able to even pop a, a pop a seventy to eighty if he can get his tackle numbers back up. 
just been really disappointing that he hasn't really got amongst those tackles in the last couple of weeks. So um, maybe with a tougher matchup against um, the next two opponents, he could possibly be more, a bit more in the stoppages and be a bit more contested and get those tackles. But it's just a bit of self-management. I have already gone and looked at his next couple of games, and he does have seven-day breaks for the next couple of games. So I don't think it's too much of a concern with... Um, him being subbed, obviously we saw him be subbed in round two because they had, a, I think, a six or a five-day break until the next game. So I think seven days is pretty standard and you should be all right to go through that. But keep an eye on the teams. If they do announce that there is a midfielder in the um, sub spot, then maybe it's a big enough flag that you can just jump off him. He is 32 and they do have to manage his time slowly in, in during games as well. So... There's that one. Um, Sexton, 100% agree. I think he's probably the number one priority target for me. Um, obviously, the unknown role with what the Gold Coast are doing. Obviously, he got shifted forward in the latest game that they played in round two. Um, pretty much stopped all his cast generation, doing it at 41. He's got 41 break even. Really wasn't scoring great. The two weeks prior, I did have a good week the first round, but unfortunately we didn't get that score because it was round zero. So I just think with the unknown change of role, a few other guys coming in, like uh, a few um, debutons coming in this week that have been named, as a few of them are being defenders. So um, yeah, I'm just a bit unsure, and I'd be moving off as quick as possible if you can. So there's that one. Dart also has a tough matchup in GWS, who I've been quite restrictive, even if we go over here. Sorry for jumping back and forth all the time, but I think it's just the best way to show you what I look at. Uh, where's GWS here? Uh, GWS. Yeah. So hardest, one of the harder matchups, and has very up and down, so good, bad, good, bad. So I'd, I'd just be jumping off, I reckon. Darcy Wilson is... Probably one I'd be jumping off as well. Um, has made his cash. He does still have a low break in of 22, but that 35 really stopped his cash generation. Um, has been going at a decent knock mid six. Uh, sorry, about a 60 range, but just had a poor week last week. Um, does have the Tigers this week who aren't too bad, I think. So let's just go to general forwards. Um, St Kilda. Bit of a tougher matchup, and then has a really two hard ones after that. So he's probably one I support jumping off if it, if you obviously jump to a one of the the the, the rookies that are going to be making a lot of cash in like a Harvey Thomas, a Gallagher, or a even spending up a little bit for a Dempsey if you can. Um, that's just the best way I'd be thinking about it. Um, just with the the run he has, it's very unlikely that he could put up a um, a big score like an 80, which we sort of saw in the preseason. It's a bit unfortunate just the, the role he's playing, playing as like a half forward, not really getting too much involved at the stoppages and getting those tackles, which we all know he can do, and not getting too many marks as well. So a bit unfortunate, but that's just the way the rookie rule that goes. So I wouldn't. I also wouldn't be confident fielding him at this stage. Um, obviously, showed that he is possible to put up a thirty, and that's just not what you want, especially in any best twenty-two game, the twenty-two round. So, moving on to Nick Cotfield. Um, yep, yeah, he's injured. He's out for the next twelve to fourteen weeks or something like that. So, if there is someone that you can move to, um, being a being a downgrade option, obviously he's three, three, four. So. Moved him down to a, I don't even know, like a Draper being the defender rookie or even a, a debutant. I don't generally support um, trading in someone that's playing their first game just because you don't really know how they're going to perform. I'd like to see it for one week, but there is a few options back there that you can trade into that get that cash generation going a little bit. I unfortunately made the trade last week where I traded in two pink and he did quite badly and uh, now he's sort of just going to be pretty stagnant on my bench for a little while. So not ideal, but... Um, hopefully you can gain some cash from me. Um, next one is Jack Billings. I think he just has to go. Um, really disappointing for the owners there where he's been, obviously was a sub the first week. Absolutely killed it the next week with, you know, 23 touches and 15 marks against Western Bulldogs. And then it's just been really mediocre. Scored a 70 last week, which wasn't terrible. Like, you would have taken a 70. Um, but 
yeah, he got subbed out on a 30 last week against a tougher matchup in Port and doesn't look like it's going to get any easier with the Crows and Brisbane Lions in the next couple of weeks before his buy. So, um, and he's going to be losing cash. So I just think jump off. It's not a super amount of, amount of cash to get to that next sort of top line guy. Talking 200k, 300k to get up to a, um, a Flanders. So I think you can find that cash there pretty easily. Um, or even downgrade them to a Dempsey. That's, that's bang you another um, 150-odd K. So definitely be jumping off there. And it's just a fair mid-price at this point. Ollie Wines is a bit unfortunate for the owners. Um, obviously has been quite underperforming. Sorry, my knee is, nose is really itchy right now. Um, really unfortunate for owners being for Ollie Wines. Um, just because he has, he's got this um, hamstring niggle now. I think they're only saying it is one week. I should actually I'll pull that up as well. I've got that in the background. Where's Port Adelaide? So Ollie Wine's hamstring. They're only saying it's one week. But um, considering how badly he has been performing, I'd probably just move on, move him on. Um, really total load time on ground. Isn't even the main CBA guy from what I've been sort of watching. Uh, where is he? So, yeah, he's been getting 50% CBAs, and that's obviously without um, Horn Francis in. I think Horn Francis is expected to return. Yeah, yeah. Full training on Tuesday, so he should be available and should be pretty much a straight swap for them too. So, yeah, definitely a good chance to jump off of him. Luckily, he hasn't lost any money. He's actually made you 4K. It's not much, but it's, it's something, I guess, um, hasn't burnt you in the end and given you some two decent scores of 88 and 88, so... Um, yeah, be happy with what you got and move him on to get to that top line guy. Where would I go from him? Um, it depends on your team structure. I know a lot of people are still running the two rookie midfielders. I personally be jumping off him and fielding that third, that third um, rookie midfielder in a um, McCurtra, Sanders, and Roberts. Having them as three on field, I think it's pretty key for your team structure. And then probably upgrading the forward line if you can, or the defense line either. Because you either don't want to have two def- two rookie um, forwards, or and you don't really want a rookie defender on your field either. So depending on your team structure, I'd advise to upgrade on one of those lines to get a rookie off field. Next couple here, Harley Reid. I can support the move for getting off him. Break even of twenty seven now. Really hasn't shown much of a ceiling. Couple back to back fifties and obviously put up the forty three last week against an easier matchup. Um, who'd love to give up points to, you know, just anybody, really. So, um, really disappointing there. And I think he's got a couple neutral matchups, so nothing to, nothing that says he's got to have a big breakout game um, for me. Just playing at all different sort of roles. We heard he was going to be halfback. Hasn't really shown that much at all. I think he's playing a lot of CBAs and even going forward a little bit. Um, so, where is he? Yeah. Mid mid sixties, I would average so sixty one average. So, um, yeah, definitely an inside mid role. So definitely loved his role. Just isn't putting up the scores to suit. And obviously, West Coast aren't scoring much as a whole collective team. So um, definitely one I could think you could jump off. I don't think he's gonna make a huge amount of money. Even if he can pop out, you know, a, a, another sixty this week, he won't make a huge amount. Um, and we could get to somebody like a like I already said, Thomas. Not, yeah, Thomas Gallagher or Dempsey, who's going to make, you know, upwards of 50k this week. So, I'd uh, definitely support the move, and he's in my considerations this week as well. Mark of Bontempelli, we all know how I sort of feel about trading our premiums. You d- premium, sorry, you don't do it. Um, he's got a good matchup this week against the Cats, um, and is actually in my um, captain's considerations, even with his, his ankle injury. Um... I know there's been a bit of talk this week with about his midfield usage, but if you actually look at the numbers, I know to the eye he played a lot more forward, but he was actually still the second highest mid in this Scott team. Obviously, Jack McRae came in the side. Libertore um, got subbed out, I think, at three-quarter time or something like that, midway through the third. So a um, little bit inflated numbers here and there, but it was good to see Sanders get some numbers. But I, I'm not too concerned. I think it was just the matchup. Um, playing a bit more forward, I'm not too concerned. I'm holding him, 
yes, it has been disappointing and has lost uh, 76k, and now a lot of other people are going to be able to jump on him a bit cheaper. But at the end of the day, still trying to get to you know a million dollars to spend up on this one of these guys is really hard to do. And we all know the run he's sort of going to have pretty shortly. Um, yeah, at least these two. Couple couple harder ones, which he doesn't really toot mind too much. Then goes on a pretty decent run before he's gone. So not not too concerned there at all. And I'd be holding if you can. The only situation I'd be considering moving on Bond is if you can get to two... What's it called? Two underpriced premiums that you know say say dang downgrade bond to a steel and then you're able to upgrade a mid price so like a, a um a fife to a top line guy like a flanders or something like that that's the only situation i would consider because i think bond and steel are probably going to go at a similar knock um not for the remainder of the year but at least for short term Steel's going at a quite good knock at 120 or 115 or whatever it is so um he's generating cash and he's scoring quite well Whereas, yeah, obviously Bond's not doing quite that. And then you're getting a mid-pricer, like a Fife, up to that top-line guy who should be scoring consistent, you know, 80s to 100 sort of range and even pushing higher than that, as we know the Flanders can do. So that's the only situation I'd be moving him on. If you can't do that and you've just sort of downgraded him and haven't done anything on the other side, then um, I think it's a waste of a trade because I think you you pretty much get like for like. Um, Caleb Windsor, yep, I'd be moving him on. I think he'd probably be my number one trade-out target if you do have him. Um, got a couple of tougher matchups coming, showing that he hasn't scored super well. Obviously, put up the 38 on the weekend, has scored 45 recent, uh, previously. Um, 31 break-even, so he's not going to make a huge amount of cash. I think Crows and Brisbane Lions are a little bit... Tougher matchups. Let's have a look here. Melbourne. Yeah, tougher matchup. So he's probably one I'd support moving out. Similar with a Reed and a Wilson. Just depends who you have. I personally don't have Windsor. I chose not to field him and uh, not to take him just with his inflated price. What has he made? 92k. So not too bad. Not it doesn't hurt me too much. But yeah, good for the owners that did have him and can move off him pretty quickly. A couple more here. I don't know how far we'll go today. Um, Blake Howes, yes, was very disappointing on the weekend, but the team news this week um, that happened last night, this is, I'm recording on Thursday morning, so um, happy with that. Um, now that May is back in the side, so May and Lever, he should be less accountable and can go back to his hopeful 60 to 70 range where he's been scoring the last three, or last month, sorry, so. Um, hopefully that is a bit better. Did have the really tough matchup against Port, so probably one I wouldn't be jumping off yet. I still think he could, you know, make another 80 to 100k, push his five k uh, his um price range to a hundred uh, 500. Um, he also does have the buy in round six, and that's when I'd be jumping off him. And that's what my plan is at this stage. So moving on to K- Tr- Christian Salem yep definitely jump off even though the midfield role is there it just isn't um, inducive to scores at this point in time no it wasn't super there actually 33% which is a little bit disappointing um, yeah just a 52 you can't be spending up you know 750k for someone who's going to put up a 52 it's just not great he's probably going to be very volatile where you know games are going to go in his favour and he can pop over 100 like he did the week prior, but obviously we know what happened in that. We, he had like a 60-plus point quarter or whatever it was, so was not looking good from that one, and it was lucky that most uh, a few coaches got off before that, the 52. So jump off. He's at a good price range where you can get up to anyone you really want, downgrading a rookie and getting that extra 50 to 100K, put it on top of his head, and then you know it's not that hard either line that you need. So definitely support that. Jai Nukem, very similar, very similar price range, doing exactly the same things. Um, definitely move off of him if you can. Um, yeah, it, don't think he has a good run. Uh, even if that, even if he did, probably wouldn't be considering it too hard. Hawthorne just don't look to be scoring well because he isn't going well. So Collingwood is a bit better for him. So if you needed to hold him, it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, hopefully he can put up above an 80 
but just hasn't been able to do that in the last couple of weeks. But even Geelong was a, an easy matchup, as you can see here in what a 79. That's that's not what we, what we want. Um, not getting the marks. Gets got a few more tackles last week, but yeah, just not getting as much ball as we saw last year. So jump off if you can. Dane, uh, Zane Dersma, um, really disappointing on the weekend after having a big score of 85 last, the pr week previous, um, 32, really stopped his cash generation, does have a bit of money on his head, um, does have a couple of tougher matchups next next couple of weeks where, you know, maybe he doesn't get too much access to the ball and doesn't can't get kick a few goals, so could probably be another, be another one that I'd support moving on and to get one of those cheaper guys. Enough said there. Uh, Marty Hoare, um, really unfortunate for those owners there. I think he has a finger injury, which is what the media come out with. Where am I going? Melbourne. Um, Marty Hoare, yeah, timing injury, sorry. Three to four weeks, so he's out for the next three to four weeks, which is disappointing for owners as he was going to make a bit of coin. Um, yeah, he's got enough money on his head, like I said, you could probably move him on. The only question is, who, who are you moving on to? We don't have that many defender rookies that I'd be considering trading in. So, you know, I don't think it's going to hurt you if you just have him sitting on the bench at this point until someone puts their hand up. Um, you could be, you could do exactly what I did, and I traded in a pink thinking that he'd go up in price. He's put up a bad score, and now he's just going to dwindle away on my bench. So, but I think I may have already said that. Um, moving on, Lazaro. Probably one I'm not so keen to move on, I don't know, I, I, I like the Lazaro, I like the way he looks, I like his role, being a bit of a half forward, and does get a few CBAs for um, North Melbourne, um, we know he's got a good, you know, he does know how to get the ball in other ways, he can tackle, he can mark, um, he also can kick goals, so I just like him, I think um, he is obviously a sub risk. He did get the sub this week, but I don't think it's going to happen every week. I think there's a few other guys that should be ahead of him. I think it's just depending on how the team's looking. Um, and it was quite disappointing with the 55 last week. Um, he was on track for 70. Didn't have a, had a zero point quarter in the last quarter, so um, it was a little bit disappointing. And I think he's due for one that's going to pop a little bit. Looking at his run as like a, I'll say his general forward. I think that's what you would class him as. For North Melbourne, he has two neutral matchups, and then you know Hawthorne after that. So probably one I'm happy to hold on to. Hopefully he can you know bump his um, cash up a little bit, even if he goes at let's just say he goes at a 55, he should get that price range up to close to 500. So um, definitely 150k more would be nice. Um, let's just see how he goes from there. But yeah, just my thoughts. Zach Williams is also another one I've been playing with about trading out um, just with the way, you know, this this week is structuring. Um, obviously, we know we've got best 18 coming next week and the week after, so um, more than happy probably to field Howes on the field in those next two weeks. Um, but at the end of the day, Williams is going to be making a, a bit more cash um, if he can be pushing, you know, 60s, if not... Um, sort of 70 range. It's to say if he goes at a 70, he's going to be pushing his price range up another 130k, so um, hopefully he can do that. Just had a bit of a quieter week this week. Just to the eye test, I think I said this in my review series on Tuesday, that he just doesn't look good to the eye. A lot of the ball that he's getting is just like a, like cheap cheap like marks from, you know, McGovern's getting the intercept possession and he kicks it to Williams, and then, you know, Williams' boots are down the line. It's nothing really impressive that, you know, really cements that, okay, here's the main guy back there. He He's going to, you know, generate a lot of cash and score well for us. He's, at any point, he could probably drop quite a low score just because he, he, he's just getting, not being that main influence guy, so they may not give it to him as much. So, But just my thoughts. Um, happy, happy to hold him. I, I think I'm going to hold him this week. Um, just looking at his run as a general defender, it does have a few kick-ins, I think, but nothing too amazing as Collingwood, oh, not Collingwood, Carlton, two neutral matchups, so, um, maybe you could look to move him on, you know, round six, round seven, after the buyers are done, and he's made his cash. Alright, a couple more here, um, wouldn't be moving off to Nick Deckhouse, um, like I said, don't trade your primos, I know he's got three tougher matchups, 
in the next two, uh, three, obviously, the fin tag, then he's got the bite, and then he has Port Adelaide, and most people are going to jump on him at, you know, after that, if not a couple of weeks after, especially probably for the Eagles matchup, but I think it's just a waste of trade, you're going to be trading him out this week, and then you have to trade him in, you know, in a week, couple of weeks' time, I just, you've picked him for a reason, he's not doing terribly, he has put up some decent scores, you know, Averaging 99, which is a little bit under just for what we sort of expected, obviously, with that bad, bad 61. But, yeah, I wouldn't be too bad. Wouldn't be too shocked if he just goes whack and, you know, has over 100 this week. So, just back him in. Nick Watson is injured. Trade him out if you can. There's plenty of uh, forward options that are generating some cash. He's got a bit of money on his head, so definitely support that one. Probably ahead of those other guys that still are playing. Um, yeah, just if they're injured, they're probably more likely to go out. So he's probably my number one trade-out target if you have him over a Dersma or a Reed or anything like that. So, And probably that will do it for the trade-out target. So just to summarise, I'll give you my my main trade-out targets if I can get my notes up. God damn. All right, so my main trade out targets would be number one, be Sexton, just with the number with the unknown role. I think it's just best to move him on. Um, he could definitely put up a you know a twenty or thirty, which you have seen in his career being playing as a forward. Um, so definitely don't want that on field. Get him out. He's got a bit of money. He can you know get him up to a mid price or just downgrade him to you know a rookie and run an extra rookie on field. I think he'll be better off and you'll make make more cash. So. Number two, I probably have five. I think just with the harder matchups um, coming up, he's obviously a sub risk being on the wrong side of 30. Um, yeah, just probably what is bigger flag to be moved on. Number three, I have Fisher, which is probably a bit of an unusual one. Maybe, yeah, I'll go Fisher. Um, just obviously hasn't been doing what we sort of expected, not going high enough. Would like to see more 85s, just, yeah, hasn't been getting it done. Has have has a couple of tougher matchups in the next two weeks. So if he does get you up to, you know, the, those top line guys, I, I definitely support the move. And it's definitely something I've tinkered with this week. Um, also, number four, Williams. I think, yeah, he hasn't, to the eye test, he hasn't been looking great. Um, yeah, just hasn't been looking great. So I, I'm not super happy with how he's traveling even though he may make another you know 50 to 80k if he does continue at his 60s or something like that so um there's number four and number five i'd probably have jordan after that um just for the easy matchup i think he he could put up a really good score this week and you know he's got the buy next week so he's in my trade my trade plans next week besides that that was my main five um obviously that's just the main popular guys most um, if you have a, a Jack Billings or an Ollie Wines, um, who else? A Salem, a Newcomb, then obviously they just need to go. I think they're pretty straightforward ones that need to just be gone from your team. They're failed, uh, failed mid prices, premiums. So get them gone. They're not. They're just um, burning cash for you. So all right. So shall we move into the main trade in targets for this week? So. Good to see a few rookies up this up this side this week. So a bit different to what we've been seeing in the last couple of weeks, where mid prices have been sort of the main guys. But starting out, Oliver Dempsey, I think he is a great trade in. Um, has shown a good ceiling, and can average quite highly, and is probably one that we want to field on put on your field. Um, he's one I'm looking at trading in this week. Got to make a lot of cash. Um, has a really good role on like a wing half forward, so can kick a few goals and does get a few of the spread and get quite a few marks. So considering like a winger on in your forward line, pretty much like a, a sharp. So um, really happy with that. Good time on ground as well. Last week he did get caught on the bench for like 10 minutes, so that's why his time on ground was so low there. But yeah, um, definitely one I'm looking to pick up, and he's got a great matchup this week and even I think a few weeks to come. So... Let's just say as a general forward for now. Um, Geelong, Geelong. Sorry, not that one. Let's just go winger. <laughs> I think I was looking at wingers. Yeah, Geelong. He's got two easy matchups this week. So um, hopefully that results in some good scoring. And even if it doesn't next week, it's best 18. So it will drop off anyway. So, But I think he's going to make it another, you know, let's just say he grows at a 70. 
he's going to make, you know, another 200k. I know some people are concerned that he may have a lower score and then he may only makes, you know, 50 to 80, but I think he's realistic going to at least make another 100, 100 to 150k. So, not too late just yet. I think this is probably the last week to get him, though. Next week is probably going to be priced closer to 500k and then that's just too much for, you know, this sort of player. On to Harvey Thomas, probably probably agree he's the second highest target to go for. Um, bit of a concern with his previous scoring, obviously 18 and 35, had the Weagles and kicked, uh, scored 100. Um, so hopefully he can be a bit closer to, not, not 100 obviously, but closer to a you know, 50 to 60 range. Um, fresh off the bye, obviously watch if he's named. There's no guarantee that he's going to be named, but um, yeah, hopefully he's there. He's got a low break even. He's going to make a bunch of cash. Even if he scores a 47, what, he's going to make 50K. So um, you can ride his cash generation for the next two, three weeks, um, even if he does go poorly. So yeah, definitely support that. And there's a good downgrade option, probably the number one downgrade option. Tom Powell, absolutely. If you do not have him already, get on him now. Um, very low break even. The role was awesome. Um, yeah, just having a breakout season this year and probably is going to be pushed closer to top six forwards and probably one that we can just hold on until, you know, mid-season buys, if not even longer, if he keeps scoring at this um, rate. So definitely would be jumping on at this price at the moment. He is, what is he priced at? Um, he's priced at about 70 at the moment. So um, even if he goes to an 80, he's still going to make over 100K and you can hold on to him at an 80. You know, you're happy with that. And his price range is just going to keep going up. So, yep, definitely jump on. Like I said, did probably does have a harder matchups coming up. Like I said, uh, what am I looking at? North Melbourne. So Brisbane, neutral matchup, Geelong, then Hawthorne. So, not too bad there. He could put up some decent scores there, and I'll definitely be jumping on. Flanders is the main um, premium target this week, as he does have a good run coming up. Um, where is it? Yeah, GWS. GWS are probably a bit more restrictive to sort of his role being half forward, um, but we'll see how he goes. If you can wait one week, I'd probably support going next week against the Hawthorne. Then he has West Coast, North, Geelong, Essendon, St Kilda, you know. Has a pretty good run before the buy, so um, yeah, expect some decent scores from him, and I definitely support the move getting on him, just whether you can get the cash for him, because he is sort of going up in price. He's gone up 35k so far. It does have a, a 96 break even, so we'll see how he goes this week. Harvey Gallagher, Gallagher, Harvey Gallagher is another rookie target. Um, was quite bullish on him recently, thinking that he's probably a better target, target than a Harvey Thomas. But I think just with the extra cash gener uh, savings of like, what, 60 to 70k, um, you know, Gallagher at the end of the day, if he's going to go back to his 50 ways, um, he's only going to make another, you know, 100 to 120k. It's not going to be anything amazing. Um, there's no guarantees in the best 22 either. I know he's, I know he's had a few good score, a few good um, rounds, but, you know, his Bevo, you never know what he's going to do. Um, they have had a few inclusions in there as well, so we'll wait, wait and see on that one. But yeah, if you if you got him, hold him. He's gonna make a lot of cash, but um, maybe I'd consider getting Harvey Thomas instead of a Gallagher this week, just with the cash and uh, savings. Tom Green, we know he's gonna be one of the best uh, midfielders in the comp. So yeah, if you've got the money, absolutely get him. No problems there. Draper is the probably the only rookie. Um, defender I'd be going to he has put up some decent scores well sorry a 30 and a 49 so he's making a bit of coin um, we'll make some money this week but I think it does have a tougher matchup as a defender very right now and then Port Alley next week before going on a decent run after that so um, it's going to be a long hold I reckon you probably want to trade him out you know closer to around 9 or 10 um it's going to be a slow burn, so. But I know a lot of us have a you know a couple of rookies on the fe on the bench that are just red dots for us. So if you are, are in the luxurious position to be moving him on and you know making a trade on the other side, um, 
yeah, definitely support jumping on him. I think he could be quite good. He's shown enough, and I think hopefully he's in the best 22. Don't see anyone jumping out at him. Let's just have a quick look at the injury list to see if anyone's due to come back. So Chapman, um, yeah, that's already a flag right there. If Chapman's due to come back, that could instantly take a spot. Um, O'Driscoll also has known to be playing in the defence half as well. Um, I don't think there's anyone else too concerning. So definitely watch for team announcements because he could be dropped. So yeah, just some fly thoughts there. Riley Bonner, yes, I, while it sucks, it's hard. It's a hard one for me because if I didn't have him, I probably wouldn't be jumping on him at this stage. Um just with the you know the unknown of his his volatility in his role, obviously some weeks he's going to be going good, some weeks he's going to be overshadowed by Wangani Malera's and your um, Sinkum, not Sinclair, sorry, not Sinkum. Don't know what I was about. Um, so he's definitely the third guy there, and he definitely can pop wherever he wants. Um, does have a decent matchup, I think. Yeah, yeah, decent, bad, decent, bad. So. Um, yeah, it's a tough one for me. I probably do support it in one way, but he's probably on the lower end of my trading priorities. Nick Martin, um, absolutely. Uh, if you can get the crash for him, it is disappointing that he's a midfield only um, at this point in time, but he will be getting defender status and looks to be, you know, top... Top six defender with ease if he can continue putting up scores like this. Averaging 113 at this point in time. Um, will probably average close to 105 in my opinion. Um, but definitely has shown that he can go really big. Love the time on ground. So he's just an athletic beast. Um, yeah, he's great. Definitely can jump on board. He's going to make a lot of cash now. Um, if you have the money for it. And it's probably an easy one to switch over from a... a um, Nolly Wines or a Newcomb or a Salem, something like that, you know, can easily make that switch. It's just, it's unfortunate that it's in the midfield where we do have those main three, four um, rookies that are fieldable options. So, happy to do that. And probably a good candidate for, like, what I said about Bont is that if you go down from a Bont to him, that saves you 160 odd K. Then you put that 160 K on another mid prices head to get them up to that top liner. So, that's the only reason I'd support that because you're getting in two top line guys for the sacrificing one. So that's the only way, way I would look at it. Um, Elliot Yo. Yeah, it's a tough one again for me. Um, obviously, did put up a couple of good scores in the last couple of weeks 98 and 108. Um, what's their run like? I think I looked at it. It's just two neutrals, isn't it? Yeah, two neutrals the next week. Um, it's going to make a bunch of cash. But it's just a time on ground for me. If I didn't have him, I'd probably be too scared off that. Um, obviously, his injury history, um, I'd probably just be leaving it, to be honest. I don't. I think there's better options. Um, and probably would just be trying to push to, closer to those top-line guys. I don't think Joe's going to be anywhere around that, that space, even though he is doing quite well currently. Um, definitely don't expect it to be sustainable for the entire season. Still, people jumping on Heaney, which is just incredible. For you know, it must be it must be hurting to not own him this entire season, where, where he is probably the number one scoring you know primo in the entire comp. Going at one twenty two, um, hasn't dropped below one seventeen, which is just crazy. Got the best matchup this week against Eagles, where I can easily see him kick you know three goals and have twenty five disposals. Mortal marks and is definitely probably number one a um, number one captain option this week for sure. So, and it's still making money, which is crazy. Um, we will the only flag I will say with this one is Adams is debuting for Sydney, um, so that could mess with his role a little bit. Just looking at the CBAs for Sydney, have a quick look here. Where's Adams got a slot in here? Is Heaney going to be pushed out? Is, don't expect Warner, don't expect Rowbottom to be pushed out at all. So I can only see him going, Heaney going down to 50% and then um, Adams is 50% as well. So um, And then probably a few of these other guys don't get a run like a McInerney, a Papley probably drops a little bit lower. Jordan probably drops out completely. So, but 
in terms of Adams, probably should have mentioned this when I was talking about Jordan being a trade-out. Um, I don't think jo- uh, Adams is affects Jordan's role at all. Jordan's a winger. Adams is a inside ball. So if they don't play the same role, it'll probably just reduce his CBS to zero, which it had very minimal anyway. So I don't think that's too much of a concern. Um, I still think he can score well enough on that wing for the next couple of weeks if you're looking to hold him more next week. This week, sorry, until you trade him at, your, at his buy. But for Heaney, that's the only flag I'd be thinking that he could be playing a lot more forward this week and probably doesn't get as much ball, but could still put up a decent score where he can kick multiple goals. As we know, he plays a quite a high, high half forward role. So um, I think he's quite a safe captain pick this week, but probably won't be trading him in with his buy next week. Jack Steele, love it. I would be doing it if I could. Um, definitely one I missed and hurts me every day to watch him. But yeah, um, if you can get him, do it. He's got good matchups. Um, yeah, he just looks to be fit and healthy and is going at a good tick. So do it if you can. A couple more here. I know this one surprises me. With I know he had a really big game this week. Got 11 marks. Not sustainable. Um, Crows, all the Crows defenders will scored quite well this game, so um, not not someone I'm looking at trading in. Not that price. Maybe if it started with like a three, maybe I'd consider it, but not not at 450. Um, I don't expect him to continue at this high 90s, and his role may not even be secure with a few Crows. Um, where are we? Crows defenders coming back, like Butts is coming back, so. Um, it could instantly come in for butts instead, so we'll see. Wouldn't be one I'd be jumping on at this point in time. Chisel, love it. He's going to be top two, if not top one, defender this year. So if you can do it, get on him. He's making coin, um, and he just is scoring so phenomenally. I do expect him to probably drop a bit of a lower score this week, being a tougher matchup against the Brisbane Lions, but we know Chisel is Chisel, so he gets plenty of the ball. Especially being on Norwood Oval, it's quite a narrower ground, so he won't be able to spread as much. But we know he has multiple avenues, so he can get tackles where he needs to. So probably expect sort of a 90 this week from him. Caleb Mitchell did look good to the eye, but only scored to 36. So probably one I'm not looking at trading in, um, just with a few inclusions to come back in the next couple of weeks with you know Adams this week. And um, who's the other one? Parker to come back after the bye, so yeah, just, let's even have a look at that, where is Sydney, this one, so Adams to come back in, Cunningham as well, you know, there's a few guys that are really pushing to, in, into the side pretty soon, so um, even Sheldrick will come in before him, so it's not one I'm jumping on, he's going to be probably another, a week in and then he'll be out if he's not already jumped this week, so bit unfortunate because he is a defender and does have midfielder status, so I do like it. But could also be a handy red dot at the end of the day with a bit of flexibility. So, a couple more here. Don't want to go too much longer, but uh, Max Gorn, um, number one ruck, I think, this year. Called it in the preseason that I think he could quite easily um, push the English and Marshall. Um, we've already seen them sort of regress a little bit this year. So, He's going at 119, so that's well clear of, I think, the next two. Um, so he's one to hold for the season, and his buy's coming up. So if you don't have him, he's still cheap. Jump on him. He's going to be a million dollars probably by in the next two weeks before his buy. So, yeah, get him while you can. Uh, people trading him back in, Lockie Whitfield. I feel like that's sort of just a bit of a sideway trade for most people, like, where they traded him out last week and now they're trading him back in. I think it's a bit of a waste of trade. Um, is he going to go great? What is his matchup like? I haven't even looked, to be honest. Call my general defender. He plays for GWS. I had Gold Coast and Kilda and Colton. So not too bad. Um, yeah. If he's the premio you want, I think he's probably a good option. He is a bit more expensive, so I would probably hunt a bit more value if you can. Um, I do think he's probably at his top of his price range, going at 113. Um, yeah, but he's probably going to go quite well these next couple of weeks. So, could definitely jump on there. 
Demorizio, I think you've kind of missed the boat, to be honest. If he's the only defender rookie, like if you're looking to get a defender rookie off field, like you're going from, you know, a Reed or a Caulfield or um, a Hall up to a Demorizio and that's your that's your, um, your D6 or even a D, D5 with Williams there as well, then I could support that. But he's got a 44 break even now. Do expect a jump up again. Um, like I said in the review video, the review video, he did have a bit of more lockdown role against the Cats. Was only scoring a sixty, so hopefully he jumps back up this week with a bit of a better score. Um, still think he has plenty of coin to make. Like if he goes, you know, close to to a seventy, he can go up, you know, another fifty k if he can push, you know, eighty, which we we sort of expect because he did go nineties. Um, yeah, it can be anywhere up to a hundred and hundred fifty k. So. Hopefully he can do that, um, but yeah, if if he's just one that's an upgrade, not really an upgrade for you. If it's if it's getting from a rookie to him, then I support it. But sidewaysing probably not so much. Dane Zorko is probably the last couple I'll talk about here. Um, so I, in my review video, I did consider trading in Zorko, but I did a bit more digging after that video and watched the the last couple of games back again and watched him quite specifically and in the fourth quarter of this game he did move into the back line after um what's his name McKenna went got down went down injured so and he had a big quarter there so he had a 36 point quarter and in this game he played um full time back as like a full uh, back distributor so that's good but the only flag i have with that is that you know, McKenna's only out for two weeks, so what happens when McKenna comes back? He's going to go back forward. You'd, you'd expect anyway. Um, the only, only reason he's gone back is McKenna. No one else has been dropped out of that side at all. So, yeah, maybe the next two weeks is he's going to score well, as he does have quite a good matchup as well as general defenders for Brisbane Lions, um, North and Melbourne. But then he goes back to forward after that, and that could reduce his scoring. Um because he was on for maybe like a 60, um, maybe a 70 into an 80 on this game before he got moved back and had a decent last quarter. Um, it's really just going to be up and down. Did kick two goals, did kick a goal here. So um, definitely inflated numbers and probably will be closer to an 85 to a 90 guy by the end of the season. So I've called my jets on that one. I don't, I'm, I'm, and I'm very obviously concerned with his age and, you know, he'll be managed at some stage. He's probably going to get injured. We know how often he gets hamstring injuries. So um, definitely not worth the risk at this time, in my, in my opinion. Um, probably the last one here, John Clark. Uh, I, I like the pick. Um, I think he's been going really, really well for the owners this week, uh, this year. Um, going at, you know, that's very consistent, 98. Um, really, really been good for owners think the defender role for them isn't too bad here yeah, has port next week but then goes in a good run after that um is cheap though sort of 755k so but my question is he's not going to be top six of in the defense line so it, it's a tough one because you know i'm talking another 100k on top of his head to sort of get to those top line guys um so realistically I'd probably be spending up a little bit more to get to those top line guys that you can just hold for the season rather than have a, a Jordan Clark that you know hasn't probably isn't going to be there Let, let's just have a look at what his previous matchup was but Brisbane Brisbane have been where's Brisbane I can't see them not blind where's Brisbane? Brisbane's the harder matchup then North Melbourne a neutral matchup then he had Adelaide, which are a neutral matchup as well. So, has been very consistent for, you know, considering Brisbane has been a harder matchup. So, it will be interesting, interesting to see when he does have a more friendly game, um, which he does have soon. So, maybe by then we can determine, okay, he's going to be top, top of that line. But considering that Luke Ryan is already in the top six, I don't think you're going to have two of the two players of the same club in the top six especially in a tight defender defender role so but if he can do it definitely supporter i'd be doing it as well just um 
I think there's other priorities in the team at this point in time. But that will do it for the main trading targets. I don't think there's anyone else too significant down here that we haven't really all talked about. A few pods here and there. Um, people are still jumping on Matt Crouch. McGrath's been doing quite well. Um, people are jumping on Conway. Just a big watch if he actually plays to get some cash generation. People are trading in Red Dot Rookies. Trading in Took. He's a good option if you need a midfielder. I think he's going to be around the mark. But besides that, I think we're pretty good. So let's just go through my main trade-in targets. So these are probably mid-prices and premiums, and then I'll talk about tra rookies after. So main tra priority trade-in is power. If you don't have him, jump on him. I think he's going to be great and going to be top six forward. Number two, Flanders. I think he's easily top three in the forward line. Um, we know what he's doing. So um, has a good run coming up as well. So if you can get up to him, which most people are looking at, um, definitely would be supporting that as number two. Nick Martin, probably number three. Um, only reason he's at number three is because I think the midfield structure for most people is already pretty much set, like myself. Um, don't want to be trading in too many mid prices at this point, uh, midfielders at this point, just because I want those three guys on field. Um, but he's going to be top six defender, so get on him. Tom Green is... I've thrown him in there at number four. Obviously, um, he's top two mid, I think. Generally, the reason he's at number four is just because I generally at this time of year you want to be looking for value and really saving that coin to you know put towards the, ne the next weeks. Um, but at the tick he's going at, um, yeah, it, it hurts not to have him. I personally don't have him, but definitely want to jump on him at some stage in the season. I just don't know when he's going to be cheaper again. So... Yep, he's number four, and I've gone Bonner at number five just um, just because of the volatility in that role, and he's not really here or there. I don't think he's going to be anywhere near top top of the line, and he's just going to be at mid-price, and he's probably going to make another, let's just say, if he goes at 85, let me chuck that number in, 85, not, he's going to make probably another 100, 150k if he can go at 85, but... If he, if he goes at 75, then he's only going to make it no, no, another 80k. So it's very unknown what his role is going to be, even if he's in the team. There's been a bit of talk in the community that he may even be dropped, but I doubt that. Um, moving on to the rookies. So my main priority to getting in this week would be Dem Dempsey. He is, this is the last time you'll be able to get him. Has a good matchup, is a good fieldable option on field, and probably the only rookie field up. Uh, rookie option I'd be considering fielding. Um, number two, I've got Thomas. Negative two break even. He's going to make a lot of money. Um, does have that 100 in his price range for uh, price changes for the next two, three weeks. So um, he's going to make a bunch of cash. Hopefully he can continue his scoring. Number three is Gallagher. Um, negative 19 break even. Can't really go wrong. Paying up a little bit for him at 340k, but um, looks to be Going really well, even if he does go back to his 55 to 60s, um, we'll make a bit of money. Number four, I've got Draper in there at, um, probably should change that now that I know that a few of the defenders are coming back for Fremantle, but if you're looking for a defender option, I think he's probably the best one there. Like I said, the only other one was um, Caleb Mitchell, and he's also probably going to be dropped this week, so big watching teams, but I've got him out at number four. And I've got Dry Clark at five, just because he's got his cash generating now. Um, if you're looking to jump off, you know, say a Windsor or a, what's it called? Let's just go back here. Um, Wilson, Reed, Windsor. You know, there's a lot of forward mid options that you could be doing a bit of DPP and getting in. You know, those sort of players that are going to generate some cash. Cash, so. Alrighty, so that's the popular trade-in and trade-out targets for the week. What am I looking at doing this week? So here's our team currently. I haven't done any trades just yet, but what I'm looking at doing, I did put up three options last week, but I think I'll just go with the one this week. Um, where was I? Let me get that real quick. So a bit of a different opinion this week. I'm looking at trading at... A Freed and a Wilson. Just because I think 
Um, they're pretty much kept at where they're scoring. The price isn't probably going to go up too much more. Um, they'd have to really pop to get it anything significant, and I'm not going to be too worried about what they're going to do. And trading in a Dempsey, who will be my F6, and a Thomas. If I can spell Thomas. Thomas, there we go. Leaves me with 86k left in the bank. Let's just confirm those trades. Go back to my team. Um, put Dempsey there. And I just, I, I like the option of having Dempsey at F6 and not fielding one of these other mid uh, forward rookies just because they are, they have shown that they can put up, you know, a 30 to a 50, whereas I think Dempsey is sort of a 50 to a 70 and has shown a higher ceiling from that. So that's at least 20 points upgrade there. And if you, you know, the way I like to look at it is the points on field. Um, yes, I could have traded a Fisher and a Fife and gotten a Zorko and a Dempsey, but then I'm also, I'm still fielding, you know, a Wilson or a Reed or one of these guys that could go quite badly. Um, whereas, you know, we, we know Fife and, Fisher, they're going to score, at least Fisher's probably going to still score 70 to 80, and Fife's probably going to at least score a 60. So, um, much prefer that rather than running the risk of a rookie on field scoring a 30. So, when I put this in my calculations, when I look at my team, this doing this trade ends up having more points on field for me and will definitely generate more cash as well. So, um, the only downside to this is that then I'm running these sort of mid prices for a few more weeks. Obviously, I said I'm probably moving off James Jordan next week with his buy, similar with Grundy. Um, so, and then even the week after that, then I'm looking at jumping off a, a house and a, a Campbell. So I'm running these guys for the next probably two, three weeks um, before I can really fix them up. So that's the only real flag. Um, you don't want to be stuck with too many mid prices in your side, but you also want to be moving on... Um, rookies and getting the mid the, the cash generation going so but overall i feel like my team's in pretty good nick um probably be a little bit behind the leaders in terms of um, team value um what's that 18.2 let's just say that oh, where am i going let's go back to the ranks let's see what other people are at so 18.6 you know so not too far behind, but 300k can be quite significant when you think about it. So um, definitely doing quite well with some of these coaches. So, But let's move on to what my captain options are going to be this week. So let's have a quick look at what the fixture's looking like. So first game, I think... So we know that Crows are generally pretty easy for Ruckman, so I think Gorn's quite a good option this week. Um... Probably wouldn't consider a Dawson. Melbourne's pretty a hard option, a pretty pretty tough matchup for midfielders, and vice versa. So if you had a, a you know an Oliver or Petrarca, probably wouldn't be doing them either. On to the next game, um, again Norwood Oval, got to be tight. Probably wouldn't consider a Sheasel just for the tighter oval. Difficult difficult matchup. Um, if you had anyone from the Lions like a Dunkley, then maybe you could throw a VC on him. Probably hasn't shown the ceiling that we're looking for just yet, but yeah, I think he's quite unique. Even Anil's quite unique. I don't think many people have any Brisbane Lions players. Port Adelaide, Port Adelaide and Essendon. Um, probably wouldn't consider a Merritt or a, a Martin just with a tougher matchup. Um, probably could consider a Butters and Rosie. They, they haven't been a super easy matchup, I thought. I think it's a bit of a tougher one. Where are we? Port Adelaide. Oh, uh, no, sorry. They're generally easy for inside mid. So, yeah, definitely could support probably... Where'd I go? Um, probably could support a Butters or a Rosie. Either one you have. I think they're both very similar at the end of the day. Probably go Rosie over Butters. On the West Coast, there's a bunch of different options you could probably choose in the Sydney Swans against West Coast. Um, obviously, Heaney's probably number one. Uh, uh, you could even do a Grundy if you wish. Um, obviously, having that nice matchup against Weagles. Um, yeah, probably the only two I'd probably consider. Probably the most two popular people that everyone has. Um, big watch on Taylor Adams as well as a trading target for the weeks to come after his buy as well. Probably no one from this game. You could probably throw it onto wrong. He's obviously been the number one scoring mid all season. So, can't really go wrong there, even though Colton have been a tougher matchup. 
in the past, so I think there's better options, but if you have him, might as well. Bontempelli, I think, is a good option in this game against the Cats. They're an easy matchup, um, so just, it's just whether you're willing to risk the you know the niggle he's had with his, uh, his injury. Hopefully he goes back to the being a midfielder, being a tougher midfielder option against the Cats. So uh, I expect that be interesting to watch at t- teams. Um, English, if you had him, he's always a good VC option. I don't think Geelong are too bad for Ruckman. Let's have a quick look. Oh, they are pretty, pretty, pretty poor. So maybe not. But you know, you've paid up for English. You might as well use him. Why do I keep going back to that tab? Green, um, I know, I believe Suns are a pretty tough matchup for midfielders, so, but you've got Green, you could probably get him in, and probably um, just put C on him, he, he's probably safe for at least 100, so, nothing too worried about there, bit of an odd matchup, probably a steal could go quite well, um, I think they're quite easy, let's go back to inside mids, yeah, just neutral, so. But we've seen in the past that it can go quite well. So I could definitely support a steal. He's going at a good nick. Um, oh, my God, I did it again. So sorry, guys. Keep jumping back and forth. Um, Taranto, if you had him. But I don't think there's anyone else that you really consider from the Richmond. Um, maybe a short. If you had a short, maybe back him in. But he's been going quite terribly for the start of the season. Most people trade him out anyway. So I probably wouldn't do that. And probably no one from this game that would have either. Obviously, Nick um, Dacos is probably going to get tagged in this game, so I wouldn't be risking it. And no one at Hawks is really off to a flyer, so not many people have them. So my top five captains for this week would be going Max Gorn on the Thursday night. Put a VC on him. I think he'll go quite well. It's been really going at a quite a good nick, obviously. Um, the hot number one scoring Ruckman so far this season. Um, so expect at least a 120 in this game, being against the Crows. Number two, I've gone with Heaney, Isaac Heaney against the Eagles. Obviously, it probably should be number one, but I just think, um, given the Adams flag, um, just unsure with it, what his role is going to be. So I've thrown him at number two, but I still think he's going to be safe for 100 sort of thing, even if he is playing a bit more forward. Number three, I had Bontempelli. Um, Where's that match up? Um, I, I just back him in. You paid up for him at the as a premium. Um, might as well back him in, even with his um, injury. He should be back in the midfield. I think it was only due to match up. Um, cats are much harder and proving to be a bit more difficult. So I think he'll be back in there and hopefully can bounce back. Um, looks to be safe for 100 either way at this point in time, even with a few bad scores. Number four, I've kind of done a bit of shithousery. I've put Rosie and Butters at four. Obviously, they're very interchangeable. Um, like I said, if you probably have, if you had both, then I'd be going Rosie. But if you have Butters, um, I think he'll go quite well as well. Um, so that's number four. And at five, I've actually gone with um, Grundy here. So hopefully, he can give us owners a bit of a a send off until he's <laughs> when we trade him out next week. Um, with a really high ceiling score, um, I don't think at any point, even if he does put up sort of a 140, I don't think um, that's going to save him in my team, unfortunately. I just don't like what I'm seeing, so um, hopefully he can put up a really good ceiling score. Um, others in my consideration were, like I said, Tarong, Taranto, and Sheasel. Um, obviously been going at quite a good rates, um, and a steal as well, so... But there's my top five for my captains. So what I'm going to be doing is going probably much Gorn into a Um Could even look at a Whitfield, but yeah, not really too confident with anyone else. Could go Butters as well. So a couple options. Hayden Young, probably not. Isaac Heaney. Uh, actually, changing on the fly, I think I'll go Gorn into Isaac Heaney. So... A few couple options in my squad, but I'll probably do that for this week. Definitely going gone tonight uh, against the Crows. So, but I have been recording for way too goddamn long. So, um, hopefully that gives you some insight of what I'd be doing if I was in your situation with some trades. Hopefully, it gives you a bit of clarity on what what I'd be or what you should be doing. Um, but yeah, hopefully you have a good round to come. Best of luck for the gather round if you're getting to Adelaide. 
Um, I'll be floating around. I'm, I'm going to the, the Friday night event at the Hat, Hat Chat Boys. Um, so I'll be floating around the city here and there. Um, say hello if you see me. I, I doubt you would, but <laughs> if you do, say hello. Um, yeah, I'll leave it there. Have a good week, guys. I'll catch you next week. Best of luck. Cheers. Bye.